In this video, you will learn how to multiply decimals and how to divide decimals. Multiplying decimals, example one. Find negative two and a half times 3.6. Let's start by estimating. Let's estimate as negative two and a half times four. Negative two and a half times four is negative 10. So because we have a negative and a positive, our answer is going to end up being negative. We can start with multiplying the two and a half times six. Six times five is 30. So we put a zero at the bottom and we carry the three. Six times two is 12. And then we need to add the three that we carried. So 12, 13, 14, 15. Then we need to put a placeholder and multiply two and a half times 30. Three times five is 15. So we can put a five and carry the one. Then we have three times two, which is six, and then we need to add the one, seven. The next step is to add the two lines, 150 plus 750 is 900. The final step is going to be to place the decimal in our answer. Two and a half has one decimal place. The five is the only digit after the decimal. And 3.6 has one decimal place. The six is the only digit after the decimal. We're going to use this information in our answer to place our decimal. We add up all the decimal places in the problem, and that's how many we put in the answer. So the answer is going to have two decimal places. Also remember, we estimated that our answer would be around negative 10. So far, we have a nine as our answer, and we remember that we knew our answer was going to be negative. So our answer here is negative nine. Is that reasonable? Negative nine and negative 10 are pretty close to each other. So yes, that's reasonable. Now it's time for you to try it. You're going to pause the video and try these two problems. And when you finish the problems, start the video back up to see how you did. Are you ready to see how you did? First of all, for number one, we have a negative times a positive. So we know our answer has to be negative because if we have different signs, the answer is negative. Let's estimate 5.1 is close to 5 and 1.8 is close to 2. So 5 times 2 equals 10. Our answer should be around 10. First, we multiply 5.1 times the 8 and get 408. And then we multiply 5.1 times 10, which is kind of like just by multiplying it by 1. And we get 51, but with a placeholder. So 510. When we add those up, we get 918. Then we have to place the decimal, and since both numbers have one decimal place, that means our answer has a total of two decimal places. So our answer here is 9.18. And when we check with our estimate, which is 10, that's pretty close. So yes, that's a reasonable answer. Number two, negative 6.3 times negative 0.6. Since both signs are negative, our answer here will be positive. Let's estimate. 6.3 is close to 6, and 0.6 is close to 1 half. So 6 times 1 half, that's 3. Now let's multiply. We've got 6.3 on top and 0.6 on the bottom, and we multiply the 6.3 times 6. 6 times 3 is 18, and we carry the 1. 6 times 6 is 36, and we add the 1 that we carried. So we have 37. Then we have to place the decimal. We have a three and a six or two decimal places. So in the answer, we have to have two decimal places also. 3.78 is our final answer. And remember our estimate was three. So three is pretty close to 3.78. Next, let's try dividing decimals. Here's our example. Find negative 8.4 divided by negative 3.6. Because we know that the decimals have the same sign, their answer is going to be positive. So we can kind of ignore the signs for now and just remember that our answer has to be positive. We will use long division to divide 8.4 by 3.6. Our first step is to eliminate any decimals in the number outside the bracket. Right now it says 3.6. We want to move the decimal one place to the right so that it ends up being 36 with no decimal. But if we do that to the number on the outside, we need to also do that to the number on the inside. So 3.6 becomes 36 and 8.4 becomes 84. 
then we can add a couple zeros because it's probably not going to divide nice and evenly and we're going to end up having some extra numbers. So we're going to add some zeros after the decimal place inside the bracket. Next, move the decimal straight up to the top where we put the answer. Now we can start dividing. Start by doing 84 divided by 36. We can estimate, we don't need to know exactly how much. So let's say 80 divided by 40. Well, 40 goes into 80 two times, so let's try two. Then we multiply two times 36 and put it underneath the 84. Two times 36 is 72. And we subtract and we get 12. Then we bring down the zero and we divide 120 by 36. Again, we can estimate. Let's estimate 120 divided by 40. 120 divided by 40 would be three. So let's try three. Three times 36 is 108. So we put that under 120 and we subtract. And again, we got 12 and bring down the zero. So we have 120 again. Well, we already know that 120 divided by 36 is going to be three because we just did that. So it looks like we're just gonna be repeating the same process over and over. We're gonna to continue to get 12 and then 120, subtract 108. So what's happening here is the remainder is going to be repeating. So since the remainder repeats, like it would be remainder 12, we're gonna to continue to get a repeating decimal. That three is going to repeat. So our answer here is 2.33333333333, or 2.3 repeating. A different method you could try if you're not a huge fan of long division is you could set it up as negative 8.4 on top of negative 3.6, like a fraction. So let's get rid of both of the negatives because we already know the answer is going to be positive. And go ahead and move the decimals over one place to the right in the top and the bottom. That's like multiplying the top and bottom by, by 10. So we have 84 divided by 36. And you can simplify that down to 7 over 3. And then you can make that into a mixed number, 2 and 1 third. And 1 third is equal to 0.3 repeating. So 2 and 1 third equals 2.3 repeating. Now it's time for you to try it. You can pause the video and use either method in order to find the quotient of these problems. Here are the answers and the work to get through the try it problems. Please go ahead and pause the video so that you can take a chance to get through all of the work and all the steps and make sure that you write everything down in your notes. Once you are done writing all of this down, you can go ahead and play the video again and then you can get started on your next assignment. Now you should know how to multiply decimals and how to divide decimals. Thanks for watching.